Hello everyone, uh, my name is Damian. Um, I've been running Fresco Pool on the incentivized testnet for about two months and now I've uh, retired that pool and um, moved on to uh, focusing my time on the Shelly testnet to get my skills ready for the launch uh, next month. Uh, so I've built a, a stake pool on the Shelly testnet uh, that's minting blocks so everything's uh, okay. and um, I thought it would be good to uh, make a video series on how exactly to do that uh, for maybe some of the uh, more novice members uh, of the community that might be, you know, uh, a bit uh, afraid of all the documentation that's on GitHub and it might be helpful to have a, a video series going through all the steps um, that they can follow that way. Um, so, yeah. Um, I've uh, mostly followed GitHub documentation when building uh, my stake pool, but uh, I also got a lot of help from the community, mostly Homer J of the AAA pools, uh, as he helped me in the ITN as well. I thank you, friend, for coming to my aid. Um, so we won't be using any scripts. Uh, we'll build everything ourselves. Uh, I think that's a good approach, uh, even though the scripts uh, are really great and they do a lot of things for you and make things faster. I think it's good to know all the steps before you use them so that you'll be more comfortable using them in the future and you'll know exactly what they're doing. So let's take a look at what we're going to cover. Um, first, um, so number one, that's a, that's an ugly one, man. I'm not even going to. I'm just gonna circle it. We're gonna build the uh, Cardano node first. That's the first step, really, you know, and connect it to the blockchain, make sure it's syncing. Uh, once uh, we've done that, then we can move on to uh, requesting some uh, funds to our address, and uh, uh, we're gonna get enough funds from the faucet. Uh, so we'll use that for all of our transactions and uh, our pledge amount for the stake pool. So the next thing we're going to cover are the transactions. Um, these are important because we will use them to uh, register our stake pool and there's kind of a, a bit of a process to them. So uh, we'll, we'll cover that. Um, then the stake pool will consist of the uh, relay and the producer nodes and the relay node will be connected to the network and the producer node is only going to be connected to our relay node so it's going to be completely hidden from the network that's the ideal situation for the for simplicity you know in this guide we'll, we'll have both nodes on the same server so they'll have the same IP address uh, but uh, ideally you would set them up on different servers uh, so they have different IP addresses and your stake pool IP address is hidden from the network. Uh, the next thing is we will need to handle the CAS scheme, uh, which is uh, yeah a, a new thing if, if you've done the uh, in ITN uh, stake pools. Uh, it's for added security, but it also you know adds some uh, work. Uh, for us, so we'll cover that. And uh, the last part is um, uh, registering a, a stake address that we're going to use to pledge to our pool and then register our pool on the blockchain. After that's done and the nodes are running, uh, we're going to be minting blocks uh, very soon because the epochs move uh, very fast on the uh, uh, Shelly testnet. So uh, that's it. Let's get started with uh, building a, a server. I'm going to use a cloud server. So this is the GitHub page that uh, contains uh, most of the stuff you'll need. Um, like uh, from setting up a server to register in the stake pool is probably the most useful. There are a lot of other pages I found useful too and I'll put all of those in the description. Um, so, right, we'll mostly use this, but now let's just get started with building a, a server. 
So I'm gonna use DigitalOcean to create a droplet. They have a good um, a good twenty dollars per month for uh, four gigabytes of RAM, two CPUs, uh, eighty gigabytes of uh, SSD, and uh, a lot of uh, network. So yeah, let's put it. Well, let's put it in London. Um, no VPC is required. We can activate monitoring if you want and uh, user data. You know, uh, this monitoring uh, it might be useful. Um, so I'll put some of my keys in there um, to uh, connect with uh, PuTTY. Uh, I'm on Windows, so I'm going to use PuTTY to connect. There, there will be also be a console to connect to the server. Um, but yeah, this is like you can uh, use whatever uh, server you want. You can do it on a virtual machine. You can do it uh, with DigitalOcean. You can do it with Google Cloud, AVS, you know, whatever you prefer, just as long as uh, you have Linux on there. Um, drop it. Okay, Shelly. Shelly. Uh, testnet. Hold on. Is that legal? Yeah. Tags. Uh, we don't need tags. Assign. Okay, assign to the project. Create the droplet. Uh, now it's being created. Um, so <clears throat> I'm gonna take the the IP address and um, right. So I'm gonna take the IP address, copy it in here, port twenty two to connect. Um, oh, uh, I save this session. Um, so Shelly, yes. Net. Save this. Uh, Let's see if everything's okay. So, okay, yeah, no private key selected. So, private key, select that, and uh, where is the it's under data? So, login log uh, as a root. By default, uh, save that, and open it. Right, there's no host name, okay, save that, open it, and now we are in. So the first thing we can do is just update stuff. There's a, a lot of things that need to be updated, looks like, so let's do that. <coughs> uh, and once we, <coughs> sorry, once we update that, we're gonna install the prerequisites for the uh, building the node. So we update, now we upgrade, and say yes. Um, so let's um, configure the ports. Uh, so if, if you're following me uh, completely, then you, you're on DigitalOcean as I am, and DigitalOcean by default allows all traffic when you create a server on, on, on their system. Uh, I think most of the other Google, uh, not Google, uh, cloud services, when you create a server, all traffic is forbidden unless you explicitly say it's okay. Uh, so this step, you know, you'll have to uh, figure out depending on what you're doing. If you're following me in, in using DigitalOcean, then uh, you can do sudo so UFV, uh, allow uh, protocol TCP, from any to any on port 22. Now this port 22 first is going to just uh, make sure that once we activate the firewall, uh, doesn't throw our connection off uh, because it's the SSH. Um, I mean, I, I have already uh, configured this, so it's uh, it's so it's keeping the existing rule because it's already there. Uh, but I'm just showing uh, you how to do it in case uh, you need, uh, you will find that useful. 
So next thing is allow protocol TCP again from any to any uh, on port 3001. That's going to be our relay node. And then uh, we'll also um, do 3000 and, and that's, that's going to be our block producer node. So we can paste that in and we can paste that in and uh, that's going to add all the uh, all the rules we need and then sudo ufv enable and uh, yeah, it might disrupt but it shouldn't because we have the rules so firewall is now active and enabled on system startup and that uh, that should be enough on DigitalOcean as I said uh, in on other uh, servers it it might be different so we have uh, updated the system and we have installed some of the dependencies uh, needed so we've basically ran uh, these two lines of codes lines of code and now we can move on to installing Cabal so we'll use uh, and uh, Cabal will be used to build the node from the source code so we can use this uh, block of code uh, to install it and I've copied it over here so we can just uh, run it as a block and the last line won't get executed so the last line you have to execute now what this has done is uh, uh, it uh, downloaded the tar file for Cabal it uh, unzipped it um, it then removed the downloaded file um, and uh, created a directory local bin and moved uh, the folder cabal to there. So in order to use the uh, cabal from the command line, we'll have to uh, add the path to our bash rc file. So uh, that's the next thing we'll have to do. So the bash rc should be in the home folder. Uh, you can see it here. So if we just edit that file, and I think I've already added the paths, but um, yeah, I've already added them, but let's uh, delete those just to see. This is what the bash RC would look like if, if nothing was there. So let's just add a comment, add paths. paths. And we want to add, uh, not that, we want to uh, copy this as the path file and um, it's good to add this one as well cabal slash bin you can add just this one for now but I suggest you just add both and then you're done with bash rc forever um, we save that and now we just need to source bash rc to kind of relog and activate the changes we just made okay so i'm going to clear that and the next thing is to install G ghc which will also be used for building node it's kind of a dependency and so we did that we did that okay yeah we need to update cabal so it grabs the latest packages uh it it, you do need to run this um, because it will ask you for it once we start building node uh, so update cabal now we can install GHC we'll run this block of code here so at this point um, uh, it, it, I like to create a directory for uh, the pool and I'll call it pool uh, so I can't create it because I already created it um, so It's uh, their pool, but you should create it so just for Organization or you don't have to you know, you can organize your directories any way you want, but uh, I'm going to do it this way So we go into pool and now uh, Here we can install GHC. So we're going to um, Take this block of code can run that code the, the this star for GHC is going to take a bit longer because it's a larger file um, but um, 
yeah, it's just going to download it, uh, tar, like unzip it, uh, remove the downloaded file, uh, go into the directory, configure it, install it, and then the last command is just to switch back. So uh, while that's being done, we can prepare the next step, which will be starting to install the Cardano node. And the first thing is to clone the GitHub repository. So uh, we'll use uh, git clone um, for that. And uh, this should be done any second now. There we go. Um, we go back to our pool directory and we can clone the GitHub. Let's clear it and we can clone the GitHub. So I, I already cloned it once, so that's why it's giving me an error. But for you, it's gonna, if you're doing it uh, for the first time, it's going to clone the repository and give you a Cardano node folder like I have here. So we have the GHC folder we just created and the Cardano node we just cloned. So let's step into the Cardano node. And uh, you see, we have all the stuff in here. So before we install the node, we just have to make sure that we are uh, installing the right uh, tag, the, the, the right version. Uh, so the latest tag is 1.13, uh, but 1.14 is uh, coming out soon. So we can run this, we can fetch all the tags, we can inspect all the tags that, that are there, they're here, and uh, we check out uh, to tag 13. So now we're all ready to build the node with Cabal, and we're going to run Cabal install Cardano node and Cardano CLI, command line interface, so let's clear it again and run that. Now, this will take some time. It's going to take about maybe even 30 minutes. And this is where the uh, four gigab gigabytes of RAM come into play. Uh, so the installer needs uh, four gigabytes of RAM to compile uh, everything and install it. Um, I have discovered that you can actually build it with less. I have uh, built it with 1.75 gigabytes of RAM, but the thing is the compiler dies, uh, it runs out of memory, it dies, and then if you run it again, it goes past that last point of um, w where it died. So after two or three times running it, it will install the node, and the node itself does not need four gigabytes of RAM. So um, that's something to think about uh, but I've also tested it with one gigabyte of RAM and that's definitely too low because it always dies at the same point and it cannot get past that point so uh, yeah just putting it out there um, right so uh, as you can see mine is already installed um, I mean it's already done the Cabal install and that's because uh, I've already installed it uh, so it's much faster uh, for me if, if you're doing it for the first time it's it's going to take about I guess about half an hour I think uh, so just uh, be ready for that um, but yeah with with that now you can clear the output and um, we are we have the node on our uh, server and now we can move on to getting the uh, configuration files that we're going to use to run the node on the testnet. So here uh, it says let's create a new folder for the relay node and the relay node is the one that's going to be connected to all the other relay nodes in the network. Uh, so it's going to be kind of like a passive node that just syncs with, syncs with the network and doesn't uh, produce any blocks. Um, right, so let's say set up a relay node and uh, first we're going to create a directory for it uh, now we don't need this in our setup because we're already in this folder uh, in this directory so we're just gonna use this make directory and change directory to the relay now uh, in my case i've already created this 
and here we are in the relay um, so now we need to get the configuration files we can use this uh, so uh, get config files um, it's just gonna use wget to download the three uh, files the config the genesis and the topology uh, so let's run that enter on the last one and uh, that's it we can clear that um, Okay, so now we basically have everything uh, we need for uh, starting the node. Uh, change back to our Kadana node directory where all the important stuff is. Um, and we're going to uh, use this code to start the node. So let's just have a look here. So um, hold start gonna be this and it's a, so it's a command Cordana node run um, and it takes a few arguments so the topology path to the topology JSON we just downloaded database path and socket path uh, to the node socket in the database uh, we don't have these right now the command is going to create them so we just need to specify where we want them where we want it to create it uh, the host address we'll need to change this to our IP address of our uh, server Port, it specifies the port the node is going to listen on. Uh, so basically, let's just say it, like it's it's going to run on port 3001. That's fine. And the path to the config JSON. So let's take care of the paths. Um, our topology JSON is, we are now in the Cardano node directory. And from there, we have a relay directory. And inside the relay uh, is the is our the, uh, uh, our config files are in there so uh, we just need to put relay and let's put the database in the same folder uh, as well as the socket so um, add the prefix relay to all of the config files and the database files and now we just need to change the IP address so get your uh, IP address of the server if it's cloud server or uh, if you do it locally uh, put your external IP address here and uh, I think that's it now we can uh, start the node uh, we copy this in we start it and there you go it's uh, doing the stuff uh, so but this display is not very pretty so uh, let's clear that uh, and it, it is useful because it outputs a lot of text so you could read a lot of stuff and, and it has useful information uh, but let's try to uh, make it a little bit nicer just uh, show you a way to um, make it pretty so we did do that by editing the configuration files uh, the configuration file um, so by default this this view mode here is going to be set to simple view and we can change that to live view when changing it to live view we also need to change one more thing and that's the trace block fetch decisions to true uh, it needs that to run uh, the live view so we save that now if we start the node again it's going to start in in this uh, view and it's uh, a lot prettier it has some system information and, and on the right side info about the how the node is doing so um, yeah another thing is that another thing I would suge suggest is always running it in a multiplexer so we can use TM UX uh, you can just run this and it will open a session and it's gonna call it zero by default uh, but uh, now um, this is a very good tool we will use it later on to run both of our nodes in one window and um, uh, we can run the node here and if we run it here then we can uh, press control B 
and D to go back to our uh, normal command line. And if we press TM, TM UX A, it's going to open the latest, uh, the last session of TMUX, and we're, we're back on the node. So it, this will continue running even if you, you know, uh, close the party session or whatever you use to connect to the server. Uh, so it's it's a very useful tool. Um, so uh, I suggest you let the node sync now. It's going to connect to the, the peers soon and it's going to start syncing. And it's going to take, um, it might take, uh, you know, a, three hours even to to sync because it's downloading you know months and months of data uh, so it takes some time but it's useful to do that before moving on because then you, you'll be synced to the tip of the chain so any new transactions that are uh, registered on the blockchain including ours uh, are going to be you, you'll be able to query them with with your synced node uh, if you move on uh, without syncing the node now then you know if you make a transaction you won't be able to see it uh you won't be able to query it because your node won't have that transaction as it's still you know many epochs behind so yeah i suggest uh, we sync the node up first and that's what i'm gonna do now uh, and then we'll be back after that All right, so now we got the node uh, synced here. It's on Epoch 69, and uh, so we're ready to move on. I got it running in the multiplexer. Um, uh, well, I mean, well done. That That's the node. Uh, we can now move on to uh, creating, a, creating some keys and an address uh, and an address for our uh, a stake pool that we're going to use to um, pledge to our stake pool and pay all the fees that we need to pay and register it. So what we need to do is uh, create a payment key pair, a, pay a payment key pair first, and uh, we can do that using the Cardano CLI. So uh, create a payment key pair. So we'll use this and uh, this will create two files, the verification key file and the signing key file, which we call payment and payment, S key and V key. Um, now, I usually put these in uh, the uh, directory of the Cardano node and I put the, 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 like my address and stuff and the pool keys I'll put in, the, in another directory, which are ready to the pool. So right now let's do this and now uh, we can see uh, we can do ls grep payment dot uh, key. So uh, it's here we created it and now uh, okay we can inspect it but there's no reason really it's just uh, an encrypted key and now we need a stake key pair okay so there are two pairs one for payments one for uh, staking so we'll create a stake key pair as well run this code to do that and it's, it's going it's going to do the same thing out the two files again stake v key and stake s key verification and signing key so uh, once that's done we can create the payment address mm -hmm. so we'll use both of our keys that we created and that means our payment address will be associated with uh, our stake key 
so this is the code create uh, an address um, so it's going to take in uh, two files the payment verification key and the stake verification key and it's going to output a payment address okay so um, let's run that and then now if we do ls and grab the payment i just grab payment and it's going to have uh, the address here so we can uh, inspect the address here it is and um, now uh, we can uh, query that address so we can ask the blockchain how, how much funds are there in, on this address before we do that we have to export this variable cardano node socket path so this is the socket path to our node socket that we stored in the relay data the uh, relay database uh, folder so uh, export socket path and um, the only difference is that we have a slightly different setup so we don't have cardano node we are already in that folder uh, so we can just put uh, the path to relay db node socket okay so let's export that and uh, now we're ready to query the address so this is the code for that it's a formula as code um, query the address so it's um, uh, it's a command Cardano CLI Shelly query uh, UTXO and then we take the address and you can put directly your address in there but you can also use this nice little uh, cat uh, command that's gonna print out the contents of payment address right into the function into the command and the testament magic that we use for uh, all the stuff related to the testnet. So yeah, if we run that now, um, we get some kind of an error. All oh, right, um, because it's running on multiple lines, so we need to have backslashes uh, between the lines. Otherwise, it tries to run uh, one line at a time, and that doesn't work because it doesn't have the arguments so if we run this as one uh, command we see uh, this output and this is correct we just created the address there's no funds in it uh, so uh, this looks uh, this all looks good now um, and yeah now let's create the stake address so the, the the stake address cannot be used to receive payments it's only for receiving rewards uh, from the, from the protocol um, so it's important that we have it because we'll need it uh, for uh, our stake pool. So let's create it now. Create a stake address. We'll use this code and uh, it uses our stake key. And remember our payment address is already associated with the stake key and it's going to create the stake address. Um, so let's do that and we can uh, grab um, these everything related to stake so we again like like with payment we have the address the uh, verification key and the um, <clears throat> signing key uh, so that's it for the addresses and the next step is to uh, get some funds into the address that we can use to uh, for transactions and registering our stake pool and also for the pledge amount uh, and delegation to our stake pool. Um, so the, the, the faucet that Cardano has, uh, we can use this uh, piece of code. Again, uh, it uses the nice, uh, so we request uh, funds from faucet. Um, so uh, this is the faucet uh, and it also uses the uh, dollar sign cat payment address to print out the address directly into the uh, command uh, line rather than uh, having to copy paste it ourselves. Um, 
So if we do that, that should give us the, uh, there we go. At the end, we say, we see success, true amount. And now I think this is 100,000 ADA. So this is in Lovelace. So one Lovelace is, uh, one ADA is one million Lovelaces. So let's see, one, two, three, one, two, three. So these are, uh, this is one million. So the, the anything I count to the left is now in ADA. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So it's a hundred thousand ADA that we have now. And um, let's see, uh, clear that. Let's try to query the address again now and see if we can see these funds. We can't, uh, that's good. Uh, so uh, what's, what's happening is probably that the transaction either hasn't gone through yet or our node hasn't caught it yet. Um, so uh, let's see how our node is doing. It's syncing okay. So um, there we go. If we run again a couple seconds later, the transaction goes through. That's how fast the system is. And we have the uh, our funds now in the address. So that's all good. Um, so now we want to uh, register our uh, stake address in the blockchain. And to do that, we'll need to uh, create a registration certificate and then uh, uh, create a transaction to send it to the blockchain uh, so, so that we are, our, address, our stake address is registered and then we're ready to delegate uh, and pledge our amount to to the pool. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, create a, a registration certificate. We're gonna use uh, this line of code and it's going to take our stake verification key and give us a stake.cert, which is the stake uh, uh, registration certificate. So we run that and now we can ls uh, can uh, grab state uh, stake and uh, we have the certificate uh, here so now we need to put that certificate into the blockchain and to do that we need to um, create a transaction so the way transactions work is we need to calculate the minimum fees we need to calculate uh, or, or take the keys associated with a specific uh, function of the transaction. So if we are uh, registering a stake address, there's a, a key deposit um, amount that we need to pay. And, <clears throat> uh, and we need to figure out uh, the TTL, the time to live, uh, time to live. Um, so uh, that's the number, that's the block number or, or the slot number that's uh, the, at which point our transaction is going to go through. Uh, so to do that, we'll, we'll first have to uh, get the protocol parameters. Let's do it in the notepad first. So uh, get protocol per parameters. Um, so th these are the this will give us a file that, that's going to hold all the parameters in there and uh, we can see we can inspect it um, so things like key deposit as, uh, as I mentioned and pool deposit for later on this is uh, what we'll uh, uh, need for later that's uh, one of the things we need um, we also need to uh, determine what time to live live we want to use uh, so to do that let's first uh, query the uh, blockchain uh, for the for the tip so let's see where the tip is right now and we can see that here slot number one five one two oh six three Okay, that's that's the latest uh, tip. So when we build our transaction, we have to take that into account. We have to say, okay, now it's on this. We need to give ourselves some time to build the transaction and then uh, send it through. So what I usually do is I take 
this number. And mind you, in, in the testnet, the epochs and slots are going very fast. So we need to, uh, the next step is to just, let's take this and let's say we want to add 5,000. 5,000 is, 5, is too much. Let's add 250. And um, then you can do some math here. Uh, There's got to be four, five, seven, eight. So this is our our time to live. It's going to be this. That's what we, we can delete this to avoid confusion. Um, but this step is like calculate TTL. Our um, TTL is going to be this. The next step is to calculate the fees. So every transaction, every transaction has a fee associated with it, and uh, we can use this block of code to calculate that. So uh, it's the calculate minimum fee. Uh, this is the in and out parameters. So we only have one, and that's our um, payment address, and we. Uh, need to change the TTL to our own okay so that's fine now if we run that we're, we're basically asking the system you know how much is the fee for this kind of transaction and it says 171309 okay so we can say like, this is the output and this is in Lovelaces and uh, the, the next thing, uh, we need to check the key deposit. Uh, because we are registering the key, so we need to include the key deposit. Normally, for a transaction, we would just uh, calculate the fees uh, and uh, that's it. But um, for, the, uh, for the registering uh, stuff, we need to pay a, an additional deposit. So uh, to calculate how um how much we uh really need to pay we can use this so it's, it's expression it's going to calculate basically this but our fees are this so these are our fees this is the key deposit and uh this is our uh, these are our funds um so let's just check if it's correct. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's not. This is a thousand ADA, and we have not ten thousand, we have one hundred thousand. One hundred thousand here. Um, so if we run this, it's going to just evaluate that expression and give us this. And what is this? This is basically the change. So once we pay the fees and we pay the deposit, this is how much we have left. And uh, this will be required to um, b build the transaction, which uh, we're going to do now. So let's build the transaction. And uh, so you see, we say build raw uh, transaction in. And now this is the uh, address that we're going to use to pay for it. And we have to change that. Uh, so we need to use our uh, Cardano, Shelly, uh, and, oh no, sorry, I thought it was another kind of code. Uh, we need to query our address again. So we can find that, uh, there it is, the code that queries our address. And we'll take this. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to, or let's do it here. Uh, address in so this is the address and then we need to add uh, hash zero because the the funds associated with here are on our transaction zero so add hash uh, zero for address in we copy that into the um, the tx in uh, argument and then tx out this is the our payment address this is the change that we're going to get back from the transaction so this is the thing we calculated here so um 
when we run this transaction, we're going to take this and the uh, amount of change uh, we're getting back is here. Uh, time to uh, live. Again, we have to be consistent. So we picked our time to live here. So we paste it in. The fee, we calculated the minimum fee here. Calculate minimum fee. So we'll paste that in here. And the output file is going to be a raw text. And the certificate file we are submitting is going to be the uh, stake certificate. So we can remove this now, not to confuse ourselves. And we can run this part of the code. And we have now, if we put ls grep uh, tx.raw, this is what we just created, the out file. Uh, this is the raw transaction now. So we need to sign it with our uh, with our keys. So <clears throat> we're going to take in the raw transaction that we just created. We're going to sign it with our payment uh, signing key and we're going to sign it with our stake signing key. And the out file is going to be TX signed this time. Okay, that's all good. And now we just need to submit it. We submit the transaction. We use the sign transaction uh, file and that's it. So, um, well, we said the time to live is going to be 1514578. So let's query the blockchain again, not the address, but the, uh, the tip uh, there we go, Shelly query tip. So we can see that we are on 1512500 and our time to live is 1514578. So we've given ourselves, uh, you know, probably uh, more time than we need, but let's just uh, wait until the transaction goes through. So you might not need uh, 2500, you know, plus 2500 slots. Uh, you might need less, a thousand might be enough. I just, uh, it's better to be sure to have enough time. So uh, let's wait for the transaction and then we'll move on. Okay, let's uh, <clears throat> query our address again. And there we go. Uh, this amount that we have now is exactly the same as the amount that we uh, specified as the amount that's going to go back into our address. So the amount minus the fees and the keys deposit. So this pretty much means that our stake address is now registered on the blockchain and we can start delegating uh, so we can move on a step further into creating our uh, stake pool and that is to generate our uh, stake pool keys so uh, we have um, three key pairs for the stake pool uh, and uh, if you uh, uh, if you took place in the ITN, then you know the the thing that's uh, different are these uh, key pairs, and they they might be a little bit confusing, especially this Kes key pair, which is the uh, key evolving signature uh, uh, scheme. Mm, so those keys need to be updated regularly, uh, rather than just creating them and forgetting about them. Um, but okay let's uh, let's start and uh, hopefully uh, the process will be uh, understandable so um, we have uh, let's first uh, create a pool keys directory okay we're gonna use this and as I said I uh, 
store the pokies in a, another folder so the pokies uh, let's go in there and uh, so first we uh, create a code key uh, a code verification key and a call signing key and um, the operational certificate issue counter file so it's going to count the keys we create um, Oh, sorry. Uh, let's let's uh, put it into Notepad first. Uh, so create code keys. Um, so we're gonna get a code verification key and we're gonna get a code signing key and the counter. Okay, so that's the first thing we have. So we have three of those uh, here, and we use the code keys to generate hotkeys. Cold keys are called cold because they should be stored somewhere safe, ideally off the server. I'm doing it on the server now for the tutorial. Um, but uh, it is suggested in the tutorial that you, uh, you, you use a local machine to uh, create the, these keys and then upload only the hotkeys on the server. So uh, the cold keys, uh, you should keep them to yourself and they should be in a non-exposed uh, location. Uh, the hotkeys are uh, not as important because they they constantly evolve, so they constantly need to be replaced. Um, but okay, we have the code key pair now. Let's generate the VRF key pair. That one stays the same, uh, and it doesn't change. Um, so that's uh, create code keys, create VRF keys. Uh, so it's just uh, a command that outputs the VRF and uh, the, uh, the VRF uh, signing and the verification key. And now uh, we get to generate in the cast key pair. So we create the cast key pair. Uh, sorry, let's do it in the notepad. Create uh, cast keys. So we create the cast key pair. Great, and um, now in order to uh, generate the operational uh, certificate, we have to do some uh, calculations. Um, we need to figure out the. Let's just have a look at some of the protocol, uh, you know, parameters. Um, so we're gonna. Sorry, my nose. Run this um, code to inspect our cat chances, except our cat chances in a relay. Um, so let's run that, and that will give us everything related to cats in the. Uh, oh, we are in pokies. Um, in the. Uh, Genesis file. So we see slots per cast period 3600. Okay, that means that one cast period is valid for uh, 3600 3, slots. So it, it translates into one epoch, I think. And we, we see another one with max uh, cast evolutions. So this key evolves with time, the uh, key evolving signature. Uh, cast uh, and it uh, one key you create can evolve <clears throat> 120 times um, so after after it has involved 120 times you would have to replace it you would have to create um, uh, create a new uh, uh, cast key and you would have to uh, get a new uh, pool certificate uh, a new operating certificate and you would have to restart your node uh, with with that new certificate so how do we figure out uh, what um, what cast period do we need to use in in this function with in this command which is going to uh, which is going to uh, generate our certificate Right, it's gonna uh, generate our uh, 
operational certificate. So we're taking in the CAS verification key. We are uh, taking in the cold uh, signing key and we're taking in the counter that we've created and now the CAS period. We have to replace this with something valid for the current period. Now I think it's still going to be 120 uh, but we can check by uh, um, uh, figure out cast period uh, we can query the tip and we can divide that number by the uh, number of slots per cast period and that's going to give us uh, the uh, current cast period that we need to pass in the uh, command for issuing the operational certificate so let's try to do that now let's uh, find the function that we use to query the tip uh, this is the address and this is the tip um, query tip that's not magic so we can take this the current um, the current tip and we can uh, create an expression that takes in that tip and divides it by 3600 and uh, we get 420 420 so that's what we need to put in here and uh, now let's change the directory to pull keys again um, because that's where our cas v key and call v key and all our keys are and we do that uh, run the command and if we grab a certificate now we have the node uh, node certificate uh, here And with that, uh, all of our keys uh, for the uh, block producing node for our safe pools are, are ready. Um, so we can move on to the next step, which is configuring the relay uh, and producer node uh, uh, topologies. So our setup is that the relay node runs on port 3001 and the producer node runs on port 3000. So we'll have to change the topology files as um, for the relay node. We have the producer, we're going to connect to the block producer node and we're going to connect to the other relay nodes. And for the producer, we're just going to connect to our relay node and that's it. So first, we can change the address of the relay node to the, our AP, uh, uh, IP address uh, which is going to be the same for both nodes as we're running on the same server and then the ports so the relay node it runs on 3001 but connects to 3000 so connects to the producer node and the producer node connects to 3001 so it connects to the relay node and then uh, the relay node needs uh, uh, relays from the uh, network, so and that's port 3001, so we need to add that uh, to that one, and that's it. So let's do that. Uh, first, we'll need to uh, make a directory for the producer node, and I'm going to call it producer. and. This will be the folder that uh, holds the uh, configuration files for the producer. So, um, okay, here we have the code that we ran before to, to fetch the configuration files. So let's just do it again in this folder. And um, we can, uh, we know that we want to change the config to have our pretty display so we can do that uh, again we turn on the fetch uh, trace block fetch decisions and we 
change simple view to live view. And now let's change the topology. So now we are changing the uh, producer node topology. So the producer node is not going to be connected to the rest of the network. It's only going to be connected to our uh, our relay node. Uh, so because the relay node is on the same server, they they will have the same IP address. But uh, ideally, you would put them on different servers, so the producer node is completely isolated. So as we said, the producer connects to the relay node, and the relay node runs on port 3001. So this one is fine. Valency is 1, because we only have one connection there. Um, so that's it for the producer topology. It only needs to connect to uh, a single node, and that's our relay node. And uh, now we can... Uh, we can change the directory to the relay and we can edit the, the topology and uh, here we can leave the um, the um, the uh, <laughs> the the relays that the other relays that it's gonna connect to and that's fine, we'll, but we need to add uh, a new address, and that's going to be um, again our uh, the same IP because we are on the same server, and we'll need to add the port. So this is configuration for the relay node. The relay node connects to the producer node, but the producer node now runs on port three thousand. So we put 3000 for the port and the valency is going to be 1 as we only have one connection there. Um, I think that should be fine. Let's see if any mistakes. I don't think so. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, and uh, that's it. That's the nodes configured. So as you can see, the producer node is only talking to our relay, and the relay node is talking to our block uh, producer node and the other nodes on the network. So we're almost there. I mean, we just have to register our stake pool now and uh, start our nodes. Uh, that's it. Um, so in the, in this part, we're going to uh, generate our uh, stake pool registration certificate, and that's going to be this part of uh, code. So um, generate uh, stake pool registration registration and uh, here we're gonna input some of the important stuff about the stake pool so uh, first we're gonna take in the keys and remember that our pool keys are in a folder called pool keys okay so we need to make sure the path we provide is correct so this is correct for our setup and and this is the uh, pool reward verification key and stake uh, verification key. So it's it's the same stake key, um, but those are in the same folder as Cardano node. So we don't put pool keys uh, here. This is stays the way it is. And now the pool pledge. So we had a hundred k ADA. And uh, we use that some of that for the fees. Uh, we use very little for the fees, but just to be sure, let's put in so one. Uh, let's put ninety k. We'll put in ninety k for the pledge, and we put one, two, um, uh, nine, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's nine ADA or nine million love laces. So nine ADA. This is ninety ADA, uh, nine hundred, nine thousand and 90,000 
Now the pool cost is the uh, operational cost per epoch that the pool takes from the rewards. So um, we, you can set that to zero. I mean, let's set it to zero for now. The pool margin is the percentage of the, it's like the tax that the pool takes from the rewards. So let's uh, set it to 1%. Uh, it's expressed as a fraction. Uh, a de decimal fraction. Um, so yeah, that's it. The, this is uh, we specify the pledge, we specify the uh, cost, the margin, and uh, we give it paths to our keys, and that's about it. So let's make sure that we are in the Cardano node, and our stake keys are here. Uh, so let's copy the code and now uh, we put ls and grab pool.certificate and there we go it was created here so that that's the first step and the next step is uh, going to be to generate the delegation certificate so uh, and, and this this means that we're going to take our stake address and uh, uh, we're gonna stake it to our. Uh, we use that address to stake to our pool. So so again, we're going to st uh, take our uh, stake key uh, that we used to create the pool certificate. Uh, and we're going to use the code keys, but those are in the directory pool keys. And uh, we'll get a, a delegation certificate out. Okay, so if we, again, ls grep uh, delegation. There we go, it's right there. So we created those two certificates, the pool certificate and the delegation certificate, and now we have to register it to the blockchain. Um, so uh, again, we'll do it with a transaction. So uh, we calculate the minimum fees. So we can use this code, calculate min fees. And we're going to make sure the paths uh, to the keys are correct. So the payment and stake keys are in our folder and our code key is on pull keys and our uh, certificate file is in the same folder delegation certificate is the same folder uh, protocol json uh, i'm pretty sure it's in the same folder ls grab protocol yep uh, same one and um we just need to figure out the time to live so let's find the uh, function that queries the uh, tip again here it is uh, this is the tip right now mm. so this is the tip so let's say we add 1000 this time and that's gonna be 151 and then 7671 so we'll use this for the time to live put that in there and that's already to give us the oh it's here uh to give us the minimum fees for this transaction uh, so the output is this um and the other thing like when we registered our stake address we had to pay a key deposit uh, this time we have to pay a pool deposit uh, for registering the pool um, so that's uh, this, but we can also find it in the Genesis file if you really want to. We can do uh, cat, so relay um, ff genesis json, and we can grab the anything related to pool. And we have the pool deposit here, and this is the amount. So the pool deposit is this much. And uh, now we have to create an expression that's going to take uh, the amount of funds we have, which is, uh, if you remember the uh, 
the amount that we are left from our previous transaction. So it's uh, it's this. We could also query the address and uh, check that way, but uh, this will be fine. And so we need to uh, deduct the pool deposit from there, and we need to deduct the minimum fees from there. And we can put that into command line, we'll get something back. And the thing we get back is, <coughs> excuse me, is the amount uh, that's going to go back into our address from the transaction. Um, so now that we have that number, we can move on to the next step, uh, which is building the transaction. Because now we know this number, we know how much we need to keep, basically. Okay, and we need to make sure that we give it the right uh, uh, payment address so we can uh, look for our qu query. Uh, so this is the query tip. We can look for our command where we query our address. It might be faster to just uh, type it in, but no, here it is. We query the address and uh, we get the transaction hash we paste that in and then again we need to add the uh, hash zero at the end for the tx ix at the end and uh, transaction out is going to be on our payment address the amount we need to get back we copied that time to live is going to be uh, what we calculated here, the current tip applies a thousand, and the fee is the minimum fee we used. We we uh, calculated from the Cardano CLI, and uh, we pass it in the pool certificate and the delegation certificate, and we get the output, uh, ter the transaction raw that we will then need to sign. See, we sign it. Uh, like before, we signed the transaction. Uh, we sign it with our payment key, we sign it with our stake key, and we sign it with our cold key. And the cold key is in the directory pool keys. That's fine. We signed it, and we just have to submit it now. With this code and we take in the TX sign that we just created and submit it and uh, that's fine uh, if you uh, haven't registered your stake address it would give you an error now uh, saying you know you cannot delegate from this address is not registered uh, so but because we did everything uh, it looks like uh, everything worked uh, so the next part uh, is uh, um, we can uh, check our pool ID, uh, which is fine. Um, get our pool ID uh, using this. So we just provide the verification key, uh, the the. Uh, the cold key but not the signing key but the verification key uh, so we can run that and then the string that's outputted is our stake pool id now let's copy that into notepad and now i don't think the next part is going to work because that part is it's not our fault uh, but um, the, something's wrong with the system currently. Um, so we query the ledger state and we grab the uh, pool public key and then we grab our, our own uh, pool ID. So let's see what happens. As you can see, uh, nothing happens. It's hanging. It's not giving you an error. It's not giving you an output. It's just hanging there. And that's why we can't... Uh, officially make sure that our stake pool is, is on there 
but that should be fixed in the 114 version that's coming out so um, but it, it uh, our stake pool with these steps uh, should be registered and ready so the only thing uh, left to do is to start the nodes uh, so let's see uh, our relay node is still running here but we're gonna try to yeah quit it uh, with Q um, and now we can separate this window into two by pressing Control B and the percent sign um, so we'll have two windows one well, let's have uh, on the left let's put the producer on the left and the relay on the right uh, so we'll start the uh, let's start the relay first so we'll go to the right uh, okay we change windows with control b and then arrow you want to go left you want to go right control b right we go right um so let's start the relay and uh, our uh, topologies in relay ff topology database path is relay relay database and relay database node socket our ip we copy our ip one more time uh, into the host address uh, so the relay as we said it runs on 3001 and the config is on relay slash config that should do it for the relay node and there it is and now um, we need to start the uh, producer so producer needs a, a, a bit of a different now someone had an issue with this uh, I don't know what happened here I'm sure they will uh, fix it soon but it the signing key is as you can see this person is whoever wrote this is not happy uh, but yeah we don't need a signing key we just need what's above um, so once again now we're not in relay we're in producer okay producer FF topology producer database producer database node socket public IP is the same because we're on the same server but it, ideally it would be different um, port as we discussed is 3000 for the producer the config JSON is uh, producer config JSON the cast key where is the cast key it's in the pool keys in, it's in the pool keys uh, directory same as the VRF key and where is the node certificate I think it's in the Cardano node folder let's let's check ls grep node um, no. ls <laughs> uh, 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 change directory to pool keys ls uh, node certificate so the node certificate is also in the pool keys and that's all the producer needs to run if uh, all of this was entered correctly let's go back to our multiplexer this should then work and look at that it's sinking it's beautiful look the producer on the left side and let me turn off the notepad now so you can see it better I'm even considering removing my camera the producer on the left as you can see it's sinking and it's it's connected to one peer and that's if we press P we see the peer list and this is our IP address it's connected to this node over here so it's working beautifully um, and the and control B right arrow to go to our producer node and if we see the peers that this one is connected it's uh, connected to uh, um, 
the uh, peers from the uh, testnet. So that's it. Uh, the epochs move very fast on the testnet. So uh, this uh, blocks minted is going to increase very soon. Uh, like, uh, you know, if you let this run and check back tomorrow, it's probably going to uh, have some blocks ready. So that's it. Uh, I hope you found this helpful and uh, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, thank you for tuning in and good luck.